My introduction to Flash came when I was about 12 years old, and I saw some tweened stick figures that two kids a year older than me had made on the school computers. Two things stood out to me. One, the idea of being able to create your own digital cartoon, no matter how crude, was the most amazing thing I had ever seen. And two, Despite being barely animated and with so little visual substance, it still perfectly captured the sense of humor I knew and admired from those two guys. I personally spent years making random 10 second stick figure animations before attempting anything more ambitious than that. Around this time, after a few years of experimenting myself, is when I would have been introduced to an animation that changed everything. Blah. One 30-minute Flash cartoon that showed what could be done with the perfect storm of random humor, little to no animation, and the ambition to create. This is the Demented Cartoon Movie. How's it going guys? My name is Graham and this is Flashlight, a series dedicated to all things Flash related on the internet. If you haven't experienced Brian Kendall's demented cartoon movie, then I think it is my duty to both recommend this movie, but also thoroughly warn and prepare you. Do not expect any Pixar level animations to be on display here. Jokes tend to get dragged out to a length that makes Peter Griffin grabbing his knee feel like the blink of an eye. And both to its credit and detriment, it is very much the pinnacle of that typical high school le random humor that's a phase we all went through, and in some ways never really left. While some might consider it cringy or too much, I think it walks the line perfectly of being genuinely clever and creative. The closest thing I can compare Brian's creation to that I know most people will be familiar with is ASDF, which came out seven years later. Beyond both sharing a relatively minimalist art style, ASDF and the Demented Cartoon movie have a similar humor of randomness, unexpected results, light payoffs, and self-referential jokes, but at a much more breakneck pace and with generally more advanced animation. So if you're willing to tap into a part of your brain that is still nostalgic for a sillier overall approach to comedy, I think there is still a lot to be enjoyed here. Brian is a tough guy to track down these days, but after I got in touch, he was kind enough to participate in a small interview with myself. That full transcript is available on our Patreon, but I'll sprinkle in pieces of it throughout this video, as well as a few other excerpts I found on various websites. The Demented Cartoon Movie was originally released back in April 2001. Somehow, Brian has managed to hang on to those original source files for 19 years. He took a quick peek for me and was able to see that he created the project in January 2001, so the full creation took about four months to complete. Brian told me the first place he uploaded it was my own personal website. At the time, having a personal web page wasn't nearly so easy as it is today, especially for someone in high school, so I piggybacked off of my father's professional university web page. Sometime after TDCM became popular, their web servers got a number of international hits all at once, bringing the whole thing to a crawl. Suffice it to say, I had to move my webpage out of there after that. As Brian states on his website, understand that I have kind of a love-hate relationship with it. There was never really intent to please anyone else. I really only made it to please me. I still find this movie funny to this day. The hate part of the relationship comes in because this thing is horridly animated. There is no artistic integrity whatsoever. This movie, yes, I consider it a movie rather than a short or an animation, watching it is a serious time investment, was so heavily watched and rewatched in my friend group that I assumed it had a more widespread renown. It turns out that it's much more of a cult classic than a true classic. It has a quarter million views on Newgrounds, a little over a quarter million on YouTube, and I'm sure at least that many again on Albino Black Sheep, who doesn't track views. Even if we were to round it up to a million, that's really nothing by today's standards. But I have to assume that most of those views came back when it was new. The Demented Cartoon movie comes from an era where online distribution was borderline non-existent. That was never Brian's goal, and he knew that the relatively large file size would hurt its chances of being properly seen that way. I never originally intended it to be distributed on the internet. In fact, I made a whole bunch of VHS tapes of it and gave them away or sold them to people. There's something so charming about 
with that. When Flash was new, the exciting part of it was sharing it online. And Brian's out here still treating it like some silly home video, something to just be shared with friends. No, don't get me wrong, that's still a huge achievement. Most of my early animations that still exist, I deleted a few, have a couple thousand views at best? But you can't help compare it to something like Mario Twins that was a viral Flash hit from only a few months earlier, and that has nearly 3 million views on Newgrounds alone. There's a notable disparity there. I have to assume that sitting through 30 minutes is simply a large deterrent on a site filled with 30 to 60 second quick fixes of entertainment. And on next to useless dial-up internet, that took a while to load. Brian claims, I didn't know exactly how long the movie would be when I started, but I had it all planned out in my head. I joked with Brian that I've never been able to tell if this movie is crafted with a Kubrick-esque attention to detail, or if it was more of a mind purge of ideas as they came to him. What you see is how it was always intended. Everything was planned out in my head, in the order you saw it. The only thing that changed from my original plan was the introduction. I had big plans for a live action scene where I would appear on camera and describe the movie complete with some slapstick gags, and then it got interrupted partway through by the previews. But I didn't have the equipment or know-how to pull something like that off. And back then, having actual video footage was really hard to do over the internet. Everything had to be under 10 megabytes, otherwise no one would watch it. This shocked me to realize the final product we were all watching back then was compressed to under 10 10 megabytes? I distinctly remember the movie took ages to load any time I wanted to watch it. Because of that restriction, sometimes I would load it up and leave that open for days, and watch it as many times as I could in that amount of time, because who knows when the next time I'd be able to load something that large on the internet would be. Flash movies had to be entirely loaded as they weren't rendered out like videos you see on YouTube. Also at that speed of internet, buffering was never really a thing. What nowadays equates to two or three songs took something like 30 minutes to load on dial-up. Sometimes worse. For all the parts that Brian still personally loves, he does somewhat dislike the dancing rectangle-eyed guy. It was the one part of the movie that I didn't have planned out. Originally, there was a gap in the movie where I didn't know what to put there, and it took me a while to finally come up with that. I was never really satisfied with it, and I think it's one of the weakest parts of the movie. And every time I'd show the movie to people, they never really seemed to enjoy that part so much. From the fake movie credits intro to several of the jokes throughout, there are some fairly obvious Monty Python influences, which becomes somewhat filtered and distilled into exactly what you would expect a teenager's version of Monty Python to be. While I understand that some out there may find it insufferable, juvenile, or stupid, I'm trying to guess at adjectives here, I don't feel that way, at least the movie knows what it is and never tried to be anything different. Asking Brian directly about his comedic influences, he shared, Monty Python is the biggest influence by far, along with Roadrunner cartoons, Rocky and Bullwinkle, Ren and Stimpy, The Simpsons, and probably a ton of stuff I'm forgetting. And here's something more obscure to give me some hipster cred or something. The 1976 Italian satire of Fantasia called Allegro Non Troppa. If you want to see some very demented cartoon movie-esque animation complete with the world exploding, Watch the last seven minutes of that movie. Back around its release, its new ground score was around 3.8 out of 5. Yet, it failed to garner any of the weekly or daily awards that Newgrounds gave out to the top scoring submissions. I'm not certain this movie is immediately funny, it has to sit with you for a while, so people's initial impressions were probably a little weak, and it doesn't help that no one is expecting a 30 minute movie. Without knowing that, I'm sure a few minutes in you start wondering when the hell is this going to end? Next thing you shut it off, give it an average rating, or don't rate it at all. In the time since, it now sits at a 4.77 out of 5, which is in the top percentile of of animations on the entire website. Despite this, it doesn't quite crack the top 50 and exists in this narrow window of incredibly well-loved, but not quite an all-time best. Although I'm sure if we were going by IMDB standards and including 250, it would be on there. And Newgrounds has a hell of a lot more entries than IMDB, so I'd say that's fair. I love the idea that there is actually a movie within a movie going on here. The majority of what we're seeing is an over-the-top series of non-sequiturs that are being witnessed by two guys in the blue and green chairs. 
They're clearly not enjoying the movie, but continue to stay locked in throughout, presumably analogous to the average viewer of the Demented Cartoon movie. And eventually, their little world becomes just as unrealistic as the one they are watching. Even the fact that these segments are even more lazily animated than the rest of the movie is eventually addressed. This movie has the random humor in spades, but I think this cheeky meta humor might be a bit ahead of its time. I think it's hilarious that the only other Flash cartoon Brian Kendall publicly released was only 30 seconds long and came after the Demented Cartoon movie. No warm-up, he just went straight for the big one. Then, I guess once you've already made one of the longest Flash cartoons on the internet, it's awfully difficult to follow up. While there were certainly plenty of references and quotes that we would take from the Demented Cartoon movie, the majority of the jokes wouldn't really work without simply screeching nonsense at one another. While Zeke Boogie Doog is immediately recognizable to anyone who has seen the movie, it doesn't even function as a sentence, let alone a joke outside of the context of this movie. So much of the humor is built around hammering a joke to brutal death, and just when you come to expect it, the movie's gonna throw some complete oddball curve at you. I don't even think it subverts expectations, because that implies maybe some subtlety. The best examples of this are when the cartoon manages to pull something from a running joke earlier in the movie, but manages to not really deliver on either of the jokes in the way you've come to expect. It's great! A beautiful part of the storytelling, and I use that term very loosely here, and the joke crafting in this comes from the fact that it's 30 minutes long. That length allowed Brian to craft his own language of jokes, built up in a way that you come to expect the unexpected, only for him to flip the script on you. Either that payoff is slightly different than what was established previously, or it pays off naturally making the reality far more unexpected than whatever random element could have been thrown into the mix. I don't even think I'm making sense trying to explain it. Maybe it's madness to try and deconstruct something this weird, truly demented. Somehow, it keeps you guessing for the entire 30 minutes. Continuity is overrated. The Earth blew up two scenes ago? Doesn't matter. At various times before your brain has the opportunity to think through the fact that that doesn't make sense, the characters in the movie address it before you can. But before you have a chance to process that, we've already moved on and likely broken some other piece of continuity. Seriously, don't think too hard on anything you're seeing here. The Earth is destroyed a total of 14 different times. Think too hard and you'll give yourself mental whiplash. I would recommend not overthinking any of it or underthinking any of it. Barely think at all, really. Brian shared an anecdote of what he considers to be his all-time favorite demented universe creation. He doodled constantly through his high school years. This one was a simple two-panel comic. The first panel had a big floating eye in it that said, I am the all-seeing eye. And then in the second panel, it explodes. I remember I doodled it in the middle of a history test, and as soon as I was done, I just started cracking up while everyone else was quiet, and I kept laughing at it for like the next two hours. I'm not sure why I found it so funny but it's always stuck with me. I still have that original comic, by the way. It's hard to explain how the movie feels so quotable, but that you would feel like a jackass if you ever said anything you saw or heard in this movie out loud. Maybe that's the point. Maybe that's the demented part of things. Blah, quirr blur 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 blur, zeeky booky doog. Kamikaze watermelon, giant red buttons, repeated decapitations, the oing boing glowing guy, and attempting to reach Mars. On their own, they mean nothing. Within the larger context of the movie, they still mean nothing, but at least you'll be able to more easily laugh along with them. Though after nearly two decades of references and this weird, obscure level of relevance being maintained after all these years, even Brian can still be surprised when these jokes reappear. He shared this one with me that he had only seen for the first time a week ago from the time of this interview. It's Snake. Uh, <laughs> And after seeing this tweet, for fellow creator Nitro Rad's own sanity, I had to ask if the Zeke H-bomb was inspired by this chameleon twist character. I don't think that's the first time someone's asked me that question. No, the Zeke bomb wasn't based on anything. I just took a cartoon bomb and put my trademark googly-eyed happy face on it. It's such an oddly specific comparison that I'm amazed others have brought it up. I guess the intersection of the Venn diagram of people who have played Chameleon Twist and enjoyed the Demented Cartoon movie isn't that big.
Rewatching this recently, it was the first time I had viewed it in somewhere close to 10 years. Imagine that fear of showing someone a two minute video because you worry that they won't like it and you've just committed them to an uncomfortable, seemingly never ending stretch of time where they have to pretend to be entertained and you have to sweat out your guilt and defend all your life choices in a string of sputtered apologies. Yeah. Imagine that, but for a 30 minute cartoon about nothing in particular. I was hesitant to share this personal obsession even when we were all 10 years old with infinite time to commit to nonsense like this. Seriously, this predated YouTube by four years. Worthwhile content was more limited and we all watched essentially the exact same things. And even then, recommending this felt like a big ask. But the odd bonding moments over the years where you realize you independently both know and love this movie have been truly wonderful. Honestly, do I recommend this movie? No, not really. But am I adamant that you should watch it? Yes. And I will confidently insist that while those two opinions are at odds with one another, I firmly hold fast to each. The combination of the Demented Cartoon movie's length and jackassery make it nearly impossible to recommend. And yet here we are. But if you have seen it before and are feeling nostalgic, or you're willing to pretend it's a simpler time, then it is still worth giving a chance. It might just surprise you. And while I do suggest that the humor is immature, it isn't like toilet humor. It's more just that it's the sort of thing a young mind would conceive of. It's all so stupid, yet so near and dear to my heart. So thank you, Brian, for this wonderful contribution to the archives of the internet. Thank you for all the laughs. Thank you for the shared memories. And while I'm getting all mopey, thank you all for watching. Thank you to the patrons of the channel for supporting me. I have a few upcoming things planned where I've been specifically consulting with them, so that's been fun. Maybe you'd be interested in checking that out as well. You know, maybe in 30 minutes or so after you watch this cartoon. Pardon me, cartoon movie. Did you buggy dead?